Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you're here. I was asked to be a guest designer for Cat Scrappiness for their new Be My Valentine release. And since Cat Scrappiness is one of the prize sponsors of Kendra's Card Challenge number nine, I thought I would create 15 cards showcasing their new products using the Challenge nine sketches. Now, if you're not familiar with my card making challenges, each quarter, I provide cutting templates for six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper, along with card sketches, where you can make a bunch of cards with little to no scraps. It's like a one sheet wonder times six, where you can pair together pattern papers along with matching colored cardstock to get creative using whatever stamps, dies, or ephemera that you'd like to decorate the cards. For these cards, I'll be using the new Be My Valentine paper pad, and I'll show you the patterns here in just a bit. These are the cutting templates here for all six sheets of pattern paper. They are color coded so that you can see which pieces belong on each of the 15 card sketches. One of the members of my Facebook group, Kendra's Card Challenges, created this awesome chart that shows the paper usage for challenge nine so it makes it easy to quickly see which patterns go together on each of the cards so when you're assigning your papers you can see which patterns you need to try to match up and if you use double-sided paper like this paper pad that i'm using you'll have more options to choose from so here are the designs in the Be My Valentine paper pad, and I'll show you both sides. This red one here that I've assigned for paper A has a crinkled paper look to it, and the back side has red hearts and leaves, which makes it look kind of floral. For paper B, I'm using this heart pattern, and then the back side has the brown crinkled look. For paper C, there's this postage envelope pattern with stamp designs, and the back side is this crinkled paper in pink. For paper D, there's this pink plaid pattern with a floral pattern on the back side. And for paper E, there's this paper with cherubs on a brown background and the back side has the crinkle paper in off-white. And then for paper F, there's this pale pink dot pattern and the back side has heart balloons. And since the heart balloons are a directional pattern and I want the hearts to be facing the right way when it's placed on the card, that's one of the reasons I assigned it to paper F. On the printable, the directions say that if you have directional patterns, you want to assign them to either papers C, D, or F. So with these papers that I assigned, the brown postage stamp pattern is directional and I have that assigned to paper C. Also, when you're cutting the papers, you'll want to pay attention to the scissors, which indicate the first cut. And you'll also want to pay attention to the arrows, which indicate which way the pieces will face or will be upright as they appear on the card sketches. I will link my introduction video above that shows how to cut the papers and explains more about how to enter the challenge. I'll link this in the description box as well. Off camera, I have cut up all of the papers according to the cutting guides and I have placed each of the pieces in numbered cellophane bags. I've also grabbed some matching colored cardstock and I cut some heavyweight cardstock for my card bases. Next, I'll cut my layers for each of the cards according to the measurements on the card sketches. Now, what's great about these sketches is that if you don't want to create all 15 cards, you can always just make one or a few. Each of the cards have the measurements for each of the pieces, including the layers. I've cut my layers and now I'll show you the process of how I have created cards one through eight. Now I'll share the process for cards nine through 15 in part two of my video that will premiere on January 31st. Now just for your information, I have sped this video up six times. I'll place the card sketch here on the screen. This is card number one and this one has two pattern papers. I used the red crinkled paper side for the bottom piece and I added some red chalk ink to rub around the edges to color over the white core of the paper. For the focal point, I'm using the Butter Me Up stamp and die set. So I've cut the bread out of brown and white cardstock and I'm stamping the sentiment onto some yellow cardstock using some Simon Hurley ink and Weeping Willow. And then I cut this out using the butter die. As you can see, I cut the bottom layer of the bread out of the brown layer that goes behind the red piece. And then to tie in the yellow color with everything else, because there wasn't any yellow in the pattern paper, I decided to cut two different colors for the strips that are shown on the card sketch. I cut those out of yellow and brown. And so I'm just going to layer these up here. 
And to keep them level when I'm putting all of this together, I added some scrap pieces behind the ends. And so now I'm just gonna glue down all of my pieces. So for the focal point, the piece of bread with the butter and the sentiment on it, I am adding some foam tape behind that just to pop it up and give it some dimension. And then to finish off the card, I will be adding three light pink hearts from the Be My Valentine sprinkle mix in the top right hand corner to match the sketch. And so after doing this and looking at it, I thought it needed something else. And so you will see in the final picture, I did end up adding some red foil stickers to the strips off camera just to pull in more of the red that was in the hearts. And this is card number one. For card two, I used a red glitter card base with a layer of ivory cardstock that measures three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I layered up the floral pattern paper with some brown cardstock. And I'm using the Tweet Hearts die set along with the Sweet Tweet sentiment set um, for the focal point on the card. And I'm cutting the bird cage out of this brushed metallic paper. And I went ahead and die cut the birds out of some red paper and the wood branch out of some brown. I cut the bird cage out again from some ivory cardstock and I used the inside piece to go ahead and glue down the birds. Before I glued down the wings, I added some red ink to make them slightly darker so that they would stand out. And then on the ivory layer, I stamped the sentiment, you're my tweet heart in the top right hand corner using the same red ink. And this is uh, Simon Hurley's Bee Sting ink, ink. And then I glued down all of the pieces and uh, I finished it off with three red hearts from the sprinkle mix. And this is card number two. For card number three, I used black cardstock for my layers and the Be My Valentine six by eight stamp set for the focal point. I cut a scrap piece of the pink crinkle paper from the paper pad and I used that for the rectangle piece in the center there. And here I'm adding some anti-static powder on top of some scrap white cardstock and then I'll be stamping one of the postage stamps along with the sentiment that says, do you believe in love at first sight or should I walk by again? I think that's a hilarious sentiment. But I stamped it with Jet Black Ranger Archival ink. And since this stays wet a little longer than other inks, I'm adding some clear embossing powder to it and then applying my heat tool to melt that embossing powder. And this will just make it shiny. Next, I cut these out with the coordinating dies that come with the stamp set or that are purchased separately, excuse me, and I glued down all of the pieces. And again, to keep things level, I added some scrap pieces behind the top rectangle piece. I colored in the postage stamp with some Copic markers. I used R29 for the red, and then I used R20 for the pink portion. And after doing that, I glued down the postage stamp on the top right corner of the pink rectangle. And then I took my Misty stamping platform and I'm going to place this inside there. I'm going to stick it upside down so I can use the magnet and still be able to see what I'm doing. But I am stamping the wavy lines stamp over just a small portion of that stamp. And then um, I did that in some black ink. And then to finish off the card, 
I added some black circle stickers on the far right and some stickles glitter glue to the heart on the stamp. And that finishes off card number three. For card number four, the sketch calls for one pattern and then a matching colored piece of cardstock for the rectangle piece that goes in the back. I cut the layers from some red foil cardstock and I'm using a sheet of pink heavyweight cardstock for the card base. For the focal point, I'm using the new Berry Sweet stamp set and I'm stamping the medium sized strawberry with jet black ranger archival ink and then coating it with clear embossing powder. Same as what I did on the last card. And then for the sentiment, I'm stamping I love you very much onto some brown cardstock using some Versamark ink. And then I'm adding some white embossing powder on top of that. And then after letting my heat gun heat up for about 30 seconds, I applied the heat to both to melt the powder and then I cut these out using the coordinating dies. I colored the strawberry using Copic markers in the following colors. I started out with a R27 for the lighter shade of red and I colored that in all over first. And then I added the darker red R29 along the outside edges and then kind of toward the center a little bit to add some shadows. And then for the seeds, I used a yellow marker, Y15. And then for the leaves, I used G24 first and then the darker G29 and I just kind of outlined the middle part and the outer edges. And I cut out the chocolate piece that goes on top of the strawberry from some brown cardstock. And then I started gluing down all of my layers. So as you can see, I cut out some hearts from the red foil layers to make the most of my supplies. And again, you'll notice that I use or add some scrap pieces behind the layers to keep everything level. Now I know it's really hard to see or tell in the video and in the pictures but the red strip across the front is red foil and that measures a half of an inch by four and a quarter inch which is slightly different than what the sketch calls for. I decided not to add that extra layer on the card base like the sketch shows so uh, in order for the strip to work I just made it go across the entire front of the card. And then to make the strawberry look more like it had been dipped in chocolate i decided to add some nouveau crystal drops in morning dew on top of the entire die cut to make it shiny and since this stuff dries clear um, it really does look like chocolate dipped strawberries it took about 24 hours to dry though so just so you know it will take a little bit to dry and then to finish this off, I added three pink heart sprinkles to the left of the red foil strip across the front. And this is card number four. For card number five, it calls for the one strip of pattern paper from Paper B. I layered it with some red foil cardstock. And then for the focal point, I'm using the Be My Valentine stamp set again. But this time I'm using the image that has the Kawaka holding the envelope inside of the square along with the circle stamp that says Be My Valentine or Be Mine Valentine. After adding anti-static powder to the white cardstock, I stamped this using the Black Ranger Archival ink again, same as before, and melted the embossing powder. I went ahead and also stamped the Happy Valentine's Day sentiment for another card I'll be sharing later. I cut these out using the coordinating dies and then I colored the image using Copic markers. I started with E57 along the edges and then I added E55 for the lighter shade. And then I colored in the heart with R29 and then I used R20 for the pink on the circle sentiment and then for the Quokka's nose. As you can see, I cut out another die cut shape from the red foil that will be hidden behind the pattern paper for another card I'll be sharing later. But to keep it level, I just added that white shape in the middle 
and I decided to use the brown crinkle paper side to match the colored quokka and I layered the square in red foil also. I popped up the circle with some foam tape and then to finish off the card I added red heart sprinkles across the bottom right hand corner. Again, here is card number five. Now for card number six, I went a different direction than what the card sketch calls for. I still used the pink crinkled pattern paper piece that measures three and three quarters by five inches for the background, but I flipped it so that my card will be portrait instead of landscape. And I layered this onto brown cardstock that measures four by five and a quarter. And I used that same color to cut out the intertwined stitched hearts, which is one of the products from release number one. It's a die set. I used additional sheets of paper from the paper pad to add different patterns inside the hearts. I stamped Happy Valentine's Day onto the pink crinkle paper using brown ink. And I cut out several layers using the coordinating dies to give it some dimension. And then to finish it off, I added a red enamel heart. And this is card number six. For card number seven, I used the stitched rope nested rectangle dies from Cat Scrappiness to cut out the bottom layer from some red foil cardstock. And for the focal point on this card, I'm using the Lovebirds on a Branch die set along with the Sweet Tweets sentiment stamp set. And so I went ahead and cut out the branch from brown cardstock, the birds from some red cardstock, and the leaves from white. I glued the two pattern paper pieces on top of the foil and I placed the branch across the middle where the decorative border is supposed to go according to the sketch. And eventually I'll be adding the sentiment to the right where the red foil is showing. But I glued down the white leaves next. I decided to keep them white to match the leaves in the pattern paper. I figured that would be easier than trying to tie in green somehow since it's not in that paper. But for the birds, I added some shading to the feathers with Copic markers. And I colored in the areas with black around the beak to make them look like cardinals. I thought I was recording when I did this, but apparently I didn't hit record on my camera, so I apologize. But I colored in the beak pieces with YR16 and the darker red shading I used R29 and R89. And so here I'm just placing them on top of that branch. And I'm trying to make it look like they're holding hands because they're not necessarily lovebirds. I guess with me adding hearts on here, they'll look like lovebirds, but um, there's different ways you can place these wings on here. But I stamped the sentiment flying by to say hi. And after stamping that, I just fussy cut around it with my scissors so that I could place it to the right of that branch using some foam tape. And I used that just to give it some dimension. And then I also had some tiny googly eyes in my stash that I thought would be really cute on this bigger bird here. So I decided to add those and then I finished off the card by adding a little bit of Stickles glitter glue to one of the hearts that I placed between the birds. And this is card number seven. For the last card I'll be sharing in this video, number eight, I'm using an older product from Cat Scrappiness, the Happy Valentine's Day Word and Shadow die set for the focal point. I've already cut this out and glued it together. This one is pretty straightforward. I glued down the pattern paper pieces according to the sketch. And then to finish off the card, I added some Stickles glitter glue to the centers of some of the flowers in the pattern paper. And this is card number eight. So again, I'll show the first eight cards and then in the next video, which will be part two, I'll share cards nine through 15 made using the Cat Scrappiness new release products and Kendra's card challenge number nine. I'd like to invite you to join in the fun and have a chance to win 
one of over $800 worth of prizes from some amazing sponsors throughout the quarter, including a $25 gift certificate to Cat Scrappiness. It really is a lot of fun, and the best part is you'll have a bunch of coordinating cards. I also want to invite you to check out the new release products available now at Cat Scrappiness. I've had a blast working with these awesome Valentine's Day themed items, and I hope you have been inspired to get creative. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.